Doctor, we have a hard problem in psychological profiling, and I would like to ask for your help with the questionnaire, sir. We, being the behavioral science unit at Quantico, did Jack Crawford send you to plead for my advice on him, on Buffalo Bill, I mean? No, I came because we need... How many women has he used, our little Billy? Five so far. All flayed? Partially, yes. But that is an active case, and I'm not involved. You've brought your best bag, though, haven't you? Yes. It is much better than your shoes. Maybe they'll catch up. Yeah, I have no doubt of it. And how you'd hate to think you were common. Oh, my. Wouldn't that sting now? Well, you're far from common. All you have is the fear of it. Now, please, excuse me. Good day. Uh, the questionnaire, sir. Okay, shooters, on the seven yard line, this stage of the double action course, when the target faces you, you'll have three seconds to draw your weapon, fire two shots, and return the weapon to the holster. On the firing line, is the line ready? The line is ready. Holster your weapon, make sure it's snapped in. At the 15 yard line, shooters, once again, when the target faces you, each time the target faces you, draw your weapon and fire two shots. On the line, is the line ready? The line is ready. Wish I had time for a social life. Unit 31 was leased for 10 years, prepaid in full. The contract is in the name of a Miss Hester Muffet. You hold this, please? Yeah. It smells like mice or rats. Stuck. Hand me that. going in there? Yes. Oh, um, if this door should fall down or <laughs> anything else, uh, this is the number for our Baltimore field office. Now, they know that you're with me. You call them if anything should happen. Might I suggest tucking your pants into your socks to prevent the rodent intrusion? <laughs> Good idea. I'm okay, Mr. Lang. You're playing piano, Miss Darling? That wasn't me.
looks like there's somebody in here. Oh, my. Oh, my. You better come out now, Miss Darling. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe in about two seconds. With Buffalo Bill, it's a little different. You'll find that he had a close relationship or desired a close relationship with his mother, but his mother rejected him. So in his fantasy, he's trying to recreate himself into something he is not. Why? The challenge. Do you have something you use when you need to, when you need to get up your courage? Memories, tableaus? Scenes from early life. I don't know. Next time I'll have to check. Your first lie to me, Clarice. How sad. Surely the odd confluence of events has not escaped you, Clarice. Jack dangles you in front of me, and then I give you a little something for your resume. Do you think it is because I like to look at you and imagine how good you would taste? I don't know, is it? There is something Jack Crawford can give me, and I want to trade for it. But he hates me, so he won't deal directly. That is why you are here. Clarice, smile. We're going to be partners. Who's gonna be there with you then? Who's gonna be there with you? Devil is gonna get you. And you're gonna be begging and pleading. No, let me have a last chance. You say, tell you, okay. He take you up to the gate. St. Peter looks around. Your name ain't on the book. Proud to be with you today. Good to see you today to the sick, the shut-in, the can't get around is very good, the arthritis done got hold of you. I want to bring a little bit of the book into your living room today and proud to see you. Jesus said that life is brief, death is sure, and that to every man someday he's going to have to walk down through the valley, dutta shatter, dutta death, and we've got to ask ourselves before he walks, He's going to have to be right here on earth with the rest of us. And who's he going to serve during that time? What's he going to be doing before he walks in the shadow? You can't be a wrinkle in the sheets of Jesus. You can't be drinking from the devil's cup all the time. You're going to have to eat with Jesus to be well fed. And you can't be around criminalizing your children beating up on your children, knocking your wife around, and you might ask yourself, what brought this up today? I'll tell you what brought it up. I read in the paper today a man had been, oh, yeah, it's hard on him. Sure, things are hard on the job. He's uptight, gets wrought up a little bit, can't sort things out. 
He comes home, the little boy runs up to him and says, Daddy, dead pal, hits a little baby like that, knocks his wife around when the food ain't ready, and I'm tired of hearing about it. I think those of you out there, when we look around, we know what Jesus said, and we especially know what Jesus said about the little children, and he made it clear to us. The message is clear in this book, and this is the only book that you need. The message is clear, and the penalties are still. Jesus, one time, was giving an important talk. All of his talks were important. And all the adults, they gathered around like this. They got up close because they couldn't hear him. And so they got real close. There wasn't no microphones back then. There wasn't no way to get up and hear him. So they got close to him to hear every word he could say. And out in the crowd, there was a little boy, a little crippled boy. Had his sister with him. And he got to think, he said, well, I wonder, could I get up to see Jesus? Could I get up and talk to Jesus a little bit maybe and he began to sneak his way up and began to edge up close a little like that and he got up close and uh-huh one of the disciples saw him like that and he reached out and kind of pushed him down like that right that second Jesus looked around and said hey what you doing get that child up here right now Jesus said and he rebuked him right then he took and he rebuked him immediately and he said don't corrupt a child. Don't be pushing a child around like this and de innocentizing a child in any way. Don't tear down the love that I put in a child. And he rebuked him and he told him right then. He said it'd be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and sink to the bottom of the sea rather than confront me after you corrupted a child. And Jesus got angry then. And for the children of you out there that are listening, I want you to know that Jesus got mad when someone began to corrupt you and criminalize you a little bit. And yeah, right here in the TV land, there's some of you out there right now that are listening. You know who I'm talking about. You know the ones I'm talking about out there. Abuse their child. Evil eyes on their child. Bad treat their child. Well, I want to tell you something. Your time will come. Life is brief. Death is sure. And you'll come and you'll be walking down through the valley of the shadow of the death someday and crawl its the creepy snarl and tear its the bite crushing bone slicing its the things going to grab up to you. And who's going to be there with you then? Who's going to be there with you? Devil is going to get you. And you're going to be begging and pleading, no, let me have a last chance. You say, say okay. he take you up to the gate. St. Peter looks around. Your name ain't on the book. And you ask around, quick, can't somebody intervene? Please, won't Jesus intervene for me? Well, he could intervene for you. He could save you right then. But he's not going to save you. Because for the child abusers and the criminalizers and the hard spankers, he washes his hand of you. And he says, hey, devil. Yes, sir, Jesus. Take him on down there. I want him to go straight down into, that's right, you know where I'm talking about, don't you? That's right, the chitlin pit of hell. And that's what's going to happen to you. You think nobody's looking. But when you get up there, there's no plea bargaining. There's no technical acquittals when you get to St. Peter's Gate. Oh, down here, sure, down here where we are, yeah. Fancy lawyer, drive a Mercedes, drive the BMW up to the courthouse. Get you out, go in there and tell the judge some trick thing. Some little deal to pull you back out of the way. Well, when you get up there, if your name ain't on the book, you're not going through. And I'm tired of reading about it, and I'm tired of hearing about it. It's a blue chip sin to take advantage of a child, to corrupt a child, to use a child, to perverse advantages in any way, and Jesus had warned us. And for those of you out there, let it be a warning what he said, and start changing your ways, because you don't think that he sees what you're doing, but he does. Don't do it no more. Your time will come. And when you walk down through the valley of the shadow of the death, you want at least a little bit of Jesus with you. If it's not but that much of Jesus in your heart, you want a little bit of him in there with you. Because if you don't have none of him in your heart, there's no chance for you. So I want you to remember what I said. I want you to start looking at this book some. 
Remember the messages in here. And you got to remember what Jesus said about children, that you have to be as a little child to enter the gates of heaven. And if you can't be born again and have the innocence of a child in your heart, you will not be in the kingdom. So when you get there, I want it to be so when you walk down through the valley that the first thing you see are the little children that come out to greet you and take you in and say, Hey, Jesus is waiting for you. Come on inside. You don't want devil to be holding your IOUs. So to the sick, the shut-in out there that couldn't get here today, proud to be with you through the TV land, proud to send this message to you today. We'll see you next time. Pleased to be with you. Pleased to be with you. Good. All right. Saddle up. Pack your field gear. You're moving out. You're going with Crawford. Where? We found a girl's body down in West Virginia. Been in the water about a week. Looks like a Buffalo Bill type situation. Forensic man from Wheeling is meeting Jack down there to print the floater. They want you to help out. You think you can handle it? Uh, yes, sir, I do. You don't have a duty piece yet, right? No, sir. Let's go. You know, a floater's no day at the beach, darling. So I believe, sir. Chop. Thank you, Mr. Brigham. Bless you, Stalin. Sir. One more thing, Starling. You don't have to like me or the way I get results, but you do have to keep a cool head. Because from here on out, you'll know everything I do. Sir. What do you make of these? Different configuration than the other victims. Get close, us. Still at exit wound level with the second or the third thoracic vertebrae, approximately six inches from the right shoulder blade, bony fragmentation at the right lateral scapula. Sir, I wonder if that's the first time that he's done that, um, placed a cocoon or an insect. Um, it'd be very easy to miss in an autopsy. Do you think we can check back on that with the others? Exhumation orders are tough to get. You need permission of the family. Sir, have them have them check Rex Bale's head. Dr. Lecter's patient. Have him probe his soft palate tissue. They'll find it. They'll find another cocoon. You seem pretty sure of that. Rex Bale was killed by the same man who's killing these girls. And Lecter knew that. He knew him. Maybe he even treated him. Now, that's what he meant by fledgling killer. That's why he is so sure that he can help us. You think so, too, don't you? Before we caught him, Lecter had a big psychiatric practice in Baltimore. But he also traveled around the country lecturing, consulting, Christ, even testifying in murder trials. And who knows how many psychopaths he turned loose just for the fun of it. Follow up on that bug when we get back. You're doing good, Starling. Thank you very much, sir. It looks like a damn good deal, sir. You think he'll go for it? Man's a raving maniac. Who knows what he'll do? Are you up to this? Yes, sir. I'm up to it. Now, Lecter's offered us his help. Couldn't we just ask him for Bill's identity? You told me you don't spook easily. You call this easy, sir? Wouldn't you say, Clarice, that for a United States senator, you are a very odd choice to act as a messenger? How is your choice, Dr. Lecter? You chose to speak with me. Would you prefer someone else? Or maybe you don't really know anything that can help us? That is both impudent and untrue. 
Tell me, how did you feel when you viewed our little Billy's latest effort? Or shall I say his next to latest? By the book, he's a sadist, but that doesn't... Life is too slippery for books, Clarice. Didn't you know that typhoid and swans came from the same god? Tell me his name. No names. No names. But I'm still waiting for your offer, Clarice. Please, enchant me. Walker. Happy hunting. On Clarice, next time you will tell me why you ran away, won't you? Now listen carefully, because I will not repeat this. You're trying to obtain a list of males rejected by all three gender centers. Check first the ones rejected for having lied about criminal records. Look for severe childhood disturbances associated with violence. How Billy wasn't born a killer, Clarice. Oh no, he was made one through years of systematic abuse. Go to the personality tests. Study their drawings. Billy's houses will be very small with tiny windows, no flowers, no pets, no toys, no sun. And his females will be even more crudely sketched than his males, but he will compensate with exaggerated adornments, jewelry, big breasts, and then his trees. Oh yes, Clarice, his trees will be frightful. How Billy hates his own identity, you see, he always has, and he thinks that makes him a transsexual. But his pathology is a thousand times more savage and more terrifying. He wants to be reborn, you see. How Billy wants to be reborn, Clarice. And he will be reborn. Okay, cut, print it. Super duper 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 duper. Now listen carefully, because I will not repeat this. You are trying to obtain a list of males rejected by all three gender centers. Check first the ones rejected for having lied about criminal records. Look for severe childhood disturbances associated with violence. Our Billy wasn't born a criminal, Clarice. Oh no. He was made one through years of systematic abuse. Look to the personality tests. Study their drawings. Billy's houses will be very dark with tiny windows, no flowers, no pets, no toys, no sun. And then his females will be more crudely sketched than his males, but he will compensate with exaggerated adornments, jewelry, big breasts, and then his trees. Oh yes, Clary, his trees will be frightful. Billy hates his own identity, you see. He always has, and he thinks that makes him a transsexual. But his pathology is a thousand times more savage and more terrifying. He wants to be reborn, you see. How Billy wants to be reborn, Clarice. And he will be reborn. Not a word to me in all these years, Hannibal. And then Crawford sends his bit of fluff over here, and you just turn him to jelly. It's too pathetic. You can turn him around now. You still think you're going to walk on some beach and see the birdies? No, I don't think so. I called Senator Ruth Martin. She never heard of any deal with you. They scammed you, Hannibal. Stand outside. Bonnie. And shut the door. Starling wants you to rot here in this little box until your teeth fall out. And nobody's afraid of you anymore. You've seen the old ones. Hannibal, they weep when their stewed peaches get cold. That'll be you, too. Unless you trade with me. 
I'm not having a witch hunt here, Mr. Crawford. It would be someone you refuse because he tried to conceal a record of criminal violence. Now, please, doctor, time's running out. Just show us the ones you've turned away. Examination and interview materials are confidential. We've never violated an applicant's trust, and we never will. Violate? Look, take a look at this. Now, sometime tomorrow or tomorrow morning, he's going to do this to Catherine Martin. In here. That was a childish bullying stunt, Mr. Crawford. I was a battlefield surgeon. Good day. Dr. Danielson? Look, search your own records. You can do it a lot faster than us anyway. Our patients are decent, nonviolent people with real sexual problems. Dr. Danielson, if we find Buffalo Bill through your information, I'll suppress that. Nobody has to know you cooperated. Truth will out, Mr. Crawford. And then what? Will you give Johns Hopkins a new identity? And put a big pair of dark glasses on this building? And a funny nose? Well, that's very clever, doctor. Very humorous. You like the truth? Try this. He kidnaps young women and rips their skin off. We don't want him to do that anymore. If you don't help me just as fast as you can, the Justice Department is going to ask publicly for a court order. We'll ask twice a day, just in time for the TV news, when Catherine Martin turns up dead and floating, and the next one and the next one, why we'll just issue another press release about good old Dr. Danielson down at Johns Hopkins, complete with all his humorous fucking remarks. It may be that... Um... I could confer with my colleagues on this and get back to you. Would you, doctor? That would be so kind. Jack, I'm the director. Crawford, sir. Transferred. Already airborne from Memphis. Senator Martin's meeting him at the airport. Jack, did you have a trainee make some sort of phony offer to Lecter in the senator's name? Yeah, I rolled the dice I had to. Well, she's mad as hell, Jack. Paul Krendler's over here from Justice. She's asking him to take over in Memphis. Justice can't play him. He's not some mob stooge, for Christ's sake. Crawford, it's Krendler. Why on earth didn't you just tell the senator about Lecter's offer? Because, Mr. Krendler, I was afraid the senator would do exactly what she's doing. Meanwhile, Memphis is mine. May God have mercy on your soul, pal. Chilton's killed her, hasn't he? That slimy little bastard. We were so close with Lecter. What now, sir? You're going back to school, Starling. Sir? Thanks for the help. Study hard. There's a place for you in my unit when you graduate. Excuse me, sir, but if you didn't want me chasing Buffalo Bill, you should never have taken me down to see that girl in West Virginia, sir. Starling, you're an inch away from being booted out of the academy. Get it? What about Memphis? If I show up in Memphis, the senator will have me checking parking meters and anchorage for the rest of my career. Not you, sir. Me. Lecter will talk to me. Well, even if he would still talk to you, which is highly debatable, they'd never let you in to see him. I'd like to try. Respectfully, sir, I am the last bullet you've got. Bring him something. I brought the Hawk Mountain Killer, a pint of my wife's banana chocolate pudding. Once he talked to me all night. There's a plane waiting for you now at the airstrip. OK. Great. Can those cops down there handle Lecter Lecter, sir? They'll use their best men, but they better be paying attention. He will.
maybe he lives in this Belvedere, Ohio, too. And maybe he, he saw Frederica every day, and he just killed her sort of spontaneously. He, he, he just meant to give her a soda pop and talk about the... Starling. But then he had to cover it up. He had to make her seem like all the rest. That's exactly what Lecter was hinting about. The market in Lecter hints is way down today. Okay? I've got two good men dead in Memphis and three civilians. Who the hell's fault's that? I've got a U.S. senator half out of her head because her daughter's going to be murdered today. And all because of your fucking mind games with Lecter. With all due disrespect, he'd still be in custody in Baltimore if you hadn't interfered. You sent in a green recruit with a phony goddamn He's offer. trying to cover your ass for letting him escape. That's enough. All of you. Starling. I'm afraid I have no choice. You're suspended from the academy. I can promise you'll get a fair hearing. Jack, you're exhausted. I want you to take administrative leave, then transfer command of the task force effective at 1,800 hours. I'm sorry, Jack. We've got to go to Belvedere, sir. Ohio's cold ground picked over 10 months ago. Our people worked it, so did the locals. Yeah, but not from this angle, not thinking that he knew her. You've got to go, sir. You heard them, Sterling. I don't have the authority. Well, then send me, then. All of his victims are women. He, he's obsessed with women. He lives to hunt women, but not a single woman is hunting him except for me. You're suspended, Clarice. He's going to kill her and skin her this morning or at noon, but today, Belvedere's our last chance. I'm flying there right now. Taxi! Sterling! Sir? There's 300 bucks here. A hotline code number. They'll patch you through to me wherever I am. Great. Great. Thank you, sir. Jack! Chronico called. The people from Johns Hopkins are anxious to talk to you. I've got them on the mobile phone. Great. Have a nice flight, and watch out for the hawk, sweetheart. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was rude, but you woke me up. See, I work nights. So, yeah, I, I shiver every time I think about those poor girls. The night sky is always ablaze with stars and constellations. Orion will look beautiful tonight, Clarice, and Arcturus, the herdsman, with his flock. But your flock is still for now, Clarice, but not forever. For you, there will always be other lambs on other nights. Dr. Lechner. Ah, well. Then goodbye, my dear. Put a nail clip to that family. Two of her fingernails are broken off, and there's uh, some jars of bread or something underneath, and it looks like she's trying to claw her way. Claw her way. Uh... I'll scrape out samples after I print her jar. All right, these are pictures of her table, facts and things. Right. All right, let's go. Give me his name, Doc. Out. Fucked I fucked up. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> we appreciate being invited into your jurisdiction. I didn't call you. That was somebody from the state attorney's office. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for you, Adrian. Now for you, Polly. Let's go for it. Rocky Five. Let's do it now. Guy goes out in the fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands on your hips. Hands on your hips. <laughs> Fucking do the hokey pokey. Hello. The party you have called is unavailable at the moment. This is Anthony Hopkins, or Hannibal Lecter, if you prefer. I would be very happy to take a message. In fact, I insist. When the last person failed to do so, I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. So please, we'll leave your name and number at the beep. Oh, and pleasant dreams, by the way. <laughs>